Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Thanks for joining us on Celebrating Act 2, everybody. It's good to see you again. We're with Art Kirsch, my partner in crime, and the fabulous Dr. Liz Lister. Liz, we're happy to have you with us. Last time, we were talking about fasting, the health benefits of fasting. And after it was over, we still were sharing for 10 minutes. There was so much more to talk about. Yeah, as a, as a matter of fact, I think you could say that we, while it was an extensive conversation and touched a lot of points, it was too fast. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, but I'm pumped. Yeah, but I'm pumped. So yeah. there were a lot of details that uh, we, as soon as we uh, wrapped, we said, wait, what about this and this and this and this? And it led to like six or seven other little uh, subtopics. So could you help uh, uh, now fill the gaps of uh, the benefits of uh, healthy fasting? Yeah, what did we miss last time? Importantly, we didn't touch last time on the fact that any type of fasting or lowering calories on purpose as part of a program lowers it, sorry, it boosts fat metabolism. It boosts fat burning while sparing the muscle, preserving muscle. And this is very important. So when people just fast, when they just don't eat enough over a long period of time, sure, they'll lose fat, but they will also lose muscle. So it's very important what you eat and the schedule on which you are fasting. So for example, we were saying if you break your fast with coffee and a donut, that's not good. If you're not eating enough to keep basic muscle intact while you're fat burning, that is also not good. Lots of health benefits to fasting when it's done properly and well. As part of a program, as as part yes. of a, 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 a regular program that somebody's figured out, like your detox program. Although, right, although exactly. Before we go there, though, uh, most uh, GPs, if you go to and you talk, start talking about uh, fasting, they don't want to get into a conversation with you. First of all, they don't have the expertise, and they know that. Right. And uh, they're going to say, no, you have to have three squares or whatever their mom and dad taught them, because nutrition, right. as we know, is uh, virtually non-existent in medical school training, which we've, we've discussed before. So right. if somebody wanted to know more about fasting, uh, and presuming they're not going to get it from the GP, are there good sources, references that people can at least explore uh, some of the possibilities with? Yes, I would look in the area of anti-aging medicine, which also is now called regenerative medicine. This is a very popular topic. We just had our annual conference, which is, of course, was held virtually this year. And there was a lot of lectures on fasting, intermittent fasting, as part of an anti-aging regimen. There's a whole packaged up program, which is what they call a fasting mimicking diet. And this is being studied all around the world. One of the world experts is this Italian doctor. He's very well known all around the world for the research that he's doing on these different types of programs that involve really lowering calorie intake and seeing what happens in animal studies. We've seen the gene turned on for longevity. And also in humans, we see all kinds of benefits, including increased longevity. Uh, after our last conversation, um, one of the things that spurred us to do this again, part two, is you mentioned something about cancer. Fasting can benefit yes. cancer That's right. patients somehow? That's right. That's correct. So there are animal studies that show that restricting their calories prevented the development of cancer. So, you know, they breed genes in certain mice strains to study what happens in cancer development. And that's what they saw is that the the, the, the mice felt fed a blah, fed a regular diet versus a restricted calorie diet. The restricted calorie animals did uh, better. They actually prevented cancer. And it's been seen in humans that an increased sensitivity and increased effectiveness of chemotherapy in the presence of a some type of lower calorie eating regimen. 
Isn't that interesting? Yeah, and also yeah, I think part, fascinating. part of it also has to, we cannot go into it today, I know for sure, but I remember having read um, uh, the, uh, the China study where they talked about certain types of foods, actually, that if you restrict, and we, we should not go into them here, but uh, I, right. I read a couple of books on that uh, a few years back. So there are all sorts of things, but that also had uh, uh, reduced uh, uh, calorie uh, and food intake as a, uh, a part of the program. So it wasn't just certain types of things. That's right. Lowering our food intake is just generally a healthy thing to do. The uh, Not to get into, we've talked about detox on other occasions, but most detox programs have some component either of a modified fast or really, you know, like at least a couple of days or maybe longer of dramatically changing what you take in. And that gives the whole digestive system a rest and a chance to eliminate, which is the second phase of detoxifying. And then there's other things to do to support the phase, what we call phase one. But again, we talked about that at other times. But that lowering the calorie intake, that just really helps. Another comment that I always think of is how our plate, this has been shown that at least in the United States where we have a significant overweight and obesity problem, you know, they say about half of adults, it's probably more like two thirds of adults in the United States are overweight or obese. Uh, also, of course, other eating disorders are, are I mean, it's, it's an, an eating problem. And one piece of that is that our plates have gotten larger. Most people ate off of smaller plates 50 years ago than what we do. So what looks like a nice full plate to us 50 years ago now would not look like a nice full plate. So this is all, it's all related. Culturally, psychologically intimidating plates now. Well, I, I, I want to make sure, because one of the topics we talked about was uh, uh, that we didn't cover, and I would like to make sure we cover it, is that... As John and you know, I'm a giving guy. Uh, I'm a very giving guy. And when it comes to weight loss, I have a lot to give. And um, when I was on the intermittent diet, it was always, uh, I was always curious about what was it that triggered uh, my body saying, okay, uh, I'm, I'm hungry now. Where am I going to go get some energy from? Is that, I mean, is that how it happens or... Uh, are there certain things that help induce that? Okay, that's really important. What I thought of when you mentioned that, Art, is that that's why it's so important to have a plan. It doesn't have to always be a quote-unquote diet program, but there needs to be a, a, some type of program that you learn about, that you follow, and it can become a lifestyle. Okay, so my husband and I are doing the detoxification program, the seven-day one that I like this week. And we're, the first couple of days are a modified fast with the shakes, with the nutrition shakes. But starting today, so my husband said, well, what do we eat? I said, normally. He was like worried about what to prepare, but it's just normal. Uh, lean proteins, vegetables, kind of Mediterranean style eating. That's how we normally eat. And so that's what we get to do, plus the ingredients that are part of the detox plan. So that's important. That's why it's important to know what it is you're going to eat. Because if you get hungry and you just go look for the first thing and you haven't set yourself up for success, that could not be good. If the first thing you can reach for is a bunch of saltine crackers, that's not so good. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Um, you also mentioned uh, the fact that uh, diet uh, fasting can benefit the heart? Do I Did I hear that correctly? Absolutely. You bet. All kinds of improvements in heart health are shown with different types of fasting approaches. Uh, lowered blood pressure, lower triglycerides, lower LDL cholesterol. And these changes happen pretty quickly after only a few weeks of eating less. Okay. So also inflammation markers go down. Okay. There's a couple of blood tests that we can measure that are markers of inflammation and they've been studied and shown to go down when people lower their calorie intake. Well, this part two has been a little faster, uh, uh, but um, uh, far more illuminating uh, on all the little bits and pieces that you touched on. Uh, and I'm uh, looking forward to in the future sometime uh, talking about these blue zones that you were talking about where 
these ultra low calorie uh, diets that has some interest to me and I think to some other people because a lot of people are using it to live longer, healthier lives. But uh, given all that, thank you again for uh, filling in some of the gaps and uh, causing us to be interested enough now to go and take a look at what reduced calorie intake uh, somewhat in the world of uh, partial fasting uh, might help improve our health. Thank you. Yeah, great, great information, Dr. Liz. See you soon. Great. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.